and welcome to Aftershark. I'm Jason Cochran here at WalletPop.com in AOL's offices in New York City. We're sitting here with Damon John, one of the sharks. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's good to see you. Thanks for coming in today. My pleasure. So here's what I want to know about you. You have a story a lot like the entrepreneurs who come before you each and every episode. How did you begin? How did it all start for you? It started in the streets of Queens. I was making hats, tie top hats. And I was selling those because I couldn't find any place to buy those. So I was selling about $20 a piece, and people started to like this product. And I, then I created the name FUBU, which was for us, by us. And, you know, I was frustrated because a lot of the designers would never admit that they sold the product to the hip-hop market, to our generation. And what I did was I took about 10 shirts. And at that time, videos were really starting to become, uh, you know, the thing in the market. Sure. And I took those 10 shirts, and for three years... I would take that shirt and go put it on a wrapper and then put it on another wrapper, take it back, put it on another wrapper, take it back, go on a date with it, take it back, dry clean it, and I put it on a bunch of videos. About three years later, when I was working at Red Lobster, people would come up to me and say, wow, you're the FUBU guy. Wait, that company's you're huge. You were Red Lobster and I was, people... I was working at yeah, Red Lobster. I was starting to get interviews. these famous people. Sure, I was starting to get interviews, right? And then these 10 shirts were in 30 videos. It was this huge company as far as everybody was concerned, but it was only 10 shirts. How did you get these on these celebrities if they didn't know who you were? Well, I was lucky enough to grow up in Hollis, Queens, and people like the famous video director Hype Williams uh, lived there, and Irv Gotti, and a lot of us uh, went on tours because LL Cool J and Run DMC were from there. So we would go and push the boxes and be roadies on the tours. So we started being very familiar with the rappers at that point, and that's how I kind of knew where the videos were being shot. So you seem like you have a real emotional story to how this all began. You really did struggle in the beginning to make it all happen. Three oh, that years. was just the beginning of it. That was three years there, and then I mortgaged my house that I lived in with my mother. I took all the furniture out in the yard and burned it and brought sewing machines in and had a factory, in the, a commercial factory in the middle of a residential area. Uh, probably was about three weeks prior to losing the home and everything else before I ended up getting a distribution deal. It's a, a great roller coaster story, but I love it. Did, did a shark of some kind come into your life to make it possible to get that deal? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So did you have to go in and make the pitches that now you're seeing every well, week? You know what? I would have failed if, if I was on the show because I got turned down by about 27 banks. And then I put an order in, uh, I put a I put an uh, a ad in the New York Times, and it says something like, million dollars in financing need orders and, and cash. About 30 people called me to, to, to give me the money, but about 29 of them were mobsters. They were giving me uh, right. deals I couldn't, right. I couldn't take. You know? But, you know, some people get desperate enough that they're willing to do it. And I've seen, I've seen people come before you and the other sharks and make deals they probably shouldn't because they're just so hungry for the money. I would absolutely need 51%. 51%. I think that I have a lot of money sitting in front of you. That is a quarter of a million dollars. I know. And my offer is off the table then. If I cannot get controlling. Of course, I'm going to say they should have made those deals. You know, because a lot of people don't understand what comes with money and the knowledge that myself as well as the other four sharks have. You know, so... It may look like they shouldn't have made those deals, but I really do think they should have made those deals. Well, the product wouldn't be anywhere if, right. if they hadn't made the Correct. deals. But at the same time, they may lose control of their idea or their company. Sometimes a lot of those people need to lose control, <laughs> you know, because they're too close to the product and they're too yeah. close to what they have and they don't make the right decisions. And if you end up doing a deal with somebody like a shark, we are all about creating wealth. And in the steps of creating wealth, we will get you exactly what you want. Well, at times it doesn't seem so much like an investing show, but like an acquisition show. <laughs> so yeah. Sometimes you guys, you guys come away with, with everything, and, and the, the people who bring in the idea sort of just get a little piece of it by the end. Yeah, but a little piece of, you know what I'm going to say, a little piece of a billion dollars is it's way so better than a whole piece of nothing. Yeah. Now, if you said you probably wouldn't have done so well yourself if you were... If you were pitching, does that give you sort of an emotional connection with some of the people who come in? I remember the first episode with Mr. Todd. You seemed like you were really moved by his pie business. I'm, and then a lot what of you've gone through to get there. You know, a lot of the people I'm emotionally connected to because maybe I'm a little jaded by the 20 years that I've been doing this, but I see the excitement in them about their products and their brands and their business, and I want to live that excitement again a lot of times. So... You know, you look at the show and a lot of people say that I'm mean or whatever the case is and we're exploiting these young entrepreneurs and in a financial time like this, how can you dangle money in, in people's faces? But 
myself as well as the other sharks as well as you and probably everybody in this room we've all lost 30 40 percent of what we have so in my stock portfolio I look at it it's depleted my real estate I look at it it's depleted everything is depleted. at this time in all our lives we are more likely to go no you know what let me concentrate on my business I'm not gonna have the headaches of somebody else's stuff no matter how much money you have yeah but it's not that's the opposite I'm investing in America and I, I don't want to sit here and act like I'm you know the God and everything is great I want to make a profit right I want to make a profit but at the end of the day you know, it's hard for all of us out here. Well, you know, you were, you know, when you started FUBU, you were able to get a hundred thousand dollar mortgage. Yes. Nowadays, I don't think people can even get you, that out of you, the bank. You cannot get that from the bank at so, all. So really, I mean, I've, I've had an entrepreneurs from this show tell me that without the sharks, they really would have gone out of business in a few weeks or months anyway. And yeah, and that's true. And um, you know, even though we give them the cash, I give a lot of these people the ability to manufacture. You know, somebody else, uh, the bank comes in and give you a hundred thousand dollars for your product. What if you get an order for ten million dollars worth of that product to come in? Now, what do you? How are you going to raise the ten million to make it? Yeah, right. Now, by the way, you uh, there was a guy on the show a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he started a company called Crooked Jaw Clothing yes. Company. He told me in our interview, or at least afterwards, uh, that you took him aside after the show to give him a little counseling. Um, what kind of things do you say to people who who were sort of in the position that you were in twenty years ago? I give them my real advice, and I and you know, in in the Shark Tank you're being hit with bombarded with questions and, and, and things from five other people as well as we're fighting each other so I don't have any time to give him the advice that he needs and then me shunning him away he feels like you know I'm lost and I'm dead but then I go to go to the side and say well listen you know what this is just your your first time you know on something like this and I'm telling you how to improve it you know well he seemed to really appreciate it it's interesting you're, you're sort of two people on the show you're the hard-nosed investor but also, you you're, you're, can be kind of soft on these guys as well. You have a soft spot. Well, you got to remember, we don't see the packages. We know nothing about the people before they come on. Literally, the producer walks up to him and says, this is somebody's, this is his name, and he has a good idea. And then they run off, and the guy comes on. Well, it's good to know it's not staged. No, it's not staged in any sense. This is really, really our money, and the, everything you see is real. The only thing you don't see is that some of those negotiations take an hour, hour and a half, and they have to chop it down. But we're beating up that guy for 10 times longer than you see on, um, on the show. But I don't see those packages. And then I go and see the show aired. I see this guy living in Long Island with his mom. I see all that stuff. And that really hit home because that was time. very similar to me. And then they chop it up. And all you see is me just saying, no, no, you know, there's 10,000 guys like you. And I just feel horrible. But at the end of the day, that was our real interaction. Right. So there you have it. He's not such a bad guy, but he can make your dreams come true. Uh, watch Shark Tank every Sunday night on ABC at 9 o'clock Eastern. This is Damon John. I'm Jason Cochran from WalletPop.com.